Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to go over using a CSS reset rule. So, um, basically a reset rule will help us set the uh, characteristics or properties of all of our elements to kind of an equal setting. And it's a really great tool for making your web pages look consistent amongst different browsers. So I want to kind of take you through this from the very beginning. So I've got a blank page set up. I already do have it saved, but I need to go ahead and set up my HTML. So, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and type in my doc type definition. HTML tag with language at attribute. I'm going to have a head section. with a character encoding, title of my page, and let's see, I will do some internal styles. So I'll go ahead and set up a that. Now in real life, you know, I don't normally use the internal style so much. I'm a you know I really do prefer to use an external style sheet. And maybe that is the better way to go. Uh, usually in my demo files, I'll use an internal style sheet just because everything's all nice and self-contained. But um, yeah, so basically same, very, very same procedure. If you're only making one page, internal styles are fine. But if you're going to make two or more pages, external style sheet's the way to go. And body of my page. There we go. So there's my basic HTML for my web page. Now, in order to really visualize what's going on, I'm going to go ahead and set up some stuff actually in the body of the page that we can see. So let me zoom in a little bit on this, make my font bigger. And let's put some content in here. Okay, I'm going to make a wrapper div. Very common technique. I'm going to have basically everything in the body of my page contained in a wrapper. Sometimes it's called container. And um, basically, I can use this to make a central column on the page, you know, have everything nicely uh, aligned and controlled. I can use different backgrounds on this. So, really good tool to have. And within this wrapper, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and create a headline one. And uh, to really see what's going on, uh, let's see, I'll just do a paragraph, okay. Little paragraph, and I'm also going to put a little unordered list, okay. Uh, an unordered list will really make this stand out, and I'll put in a few list items. Um, pretty good. Okay, so now we actually have something to look at. And I'm going to do one more thing to make this really stand out. I'm just going to run up to my styles and I'm going to say my wrapper, which is really my div wrapper. By the way, putting div here in front of the uh, hash mark, in front of the pound sign, not essential. Putting the div there or not putting the div there would give me the same result. Okay. Um, I'm putting the div there to really make it clear that this ID wrapper selector corresponds to a div tag that I've got on the page. I don't want to do a space there. Putting a space there means something different. Okay, And I'm just going to do a little background color on this, which is a light blue-gray. Wrong curly braces. All right, so I've got a lot of stuff going on here. Let's see how things are looking by default. So this is just a standard HTML file with very minimal, uh, with very minimal styles. And I've got several browsers that I want to check out today. Everything is saved. Uh, first, I will jump over to Firefox, and I've already got my page loaded in Firefox. I just need to refresh to show the changes. And here's my page, and you can see where clearly my wrapper is. You can see the headline one, my paragraph, and my unordered list. This is in Firefox. Let's check it out in Chrome. Chrome, and refresh. There we go. Things are looking very consistent. And let's check this out in IE. Where's refresh in IE? There it is. Okay, all right, so this is what we've got. And let me kind of move this off to the side. 
and what I'm looking for is just really what's different about the page. And so far, things are looking quite good. We see a slight difference in the bullets. So Internet Explorer displays bullets a little differently than Chrome displays bullets. And if I open up Firefox and then put IE on top of that one, we can kind of see some. Let me kind of line these up so the visible portion of the page is match up a little bit here. There we go. And we can start to see some things here. Um, once again, bullets look a little bit different in Firefox than they do in IE. One of the things I'd like to draw your attention to, in fact, let me kind of cascade these a bit so we can see the edges for each one. So we've got Chrome, Firefox, and IE. And what I'm really looking at first is some of this initial space. Look how in all of the browsers I've got this little bit of margin right here. You can see the white in between the edge of the browser and the uh, blue uh, wrapper. I've got a little bit on the left and I've got a little bit on the top. And of course, I've also got a little bit on the, on the right as well. And it's this default margin which sometimes gives us a little bit of a headache. And a reset rule will help uh, take care of that. And we'd also have to be really, with a critical eye, notice this. And I don't know if you'll, you catch this or not. But the amount of space, okay, you have to be like a little bit of OCD for this. But the amount of space between the edge of, I'm looking in Chrome over here. The amount of space between the edge of my wrapper to my bullets in Chrome looks smaller than in IE, the edge of the space from the wrapper to the bullet. So there's a little bit more space than IE. Um, gee, how do you know that kind of stuff? Well, uh, part of it's just by looking at it by eye. We could really zoom in and check it out. I've got this great little uh, add-on for Firefox and for Chrome, actually, and it's the uh, Measure It, the Measure It Fire, uh, add-on. It's not just Firefox, but I can click this, and that will give me a little, uh, let's see, let me try it again. No, it's not working there. Let me show it to you in Firefox. I usually use it there. little Measure It, and I can kind of put a crosshairs there, go to the edge of my bullets, and I can start to see... All right, so pretty much it's about 28 pixels of space, maybe a little, maybe I overcompensated, about 25, 26 pixels of space in between the edges. And you can use those kinds of tools to figure out what's going on a little bit. And yeah, let me turn that back off. So those slight differences in spaces and these margins up here is why we want to use a reset rule. But when you use a reset rule, you, you know, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look kind of weird. So let me just jump over to my editor real quick. I'm going to go to my styles. And I always put my reset rule at the very top, and you should do the same. Your reset rule should be the first rule in your styles, whether you're using internal styles, which is rare, but on your external style sheet, reset rule goes first. And the one that I'm going to use is I'm going to use a wildcard asterisk as my selector. So basically, I'm going to be manipulating all elements, and I'm going to set margin to 0 pixels and padding to 0 pixels. Um, you'll often see this where they don't actually put the PX unit of measurement. Um, this is actually OK, margin 0, padding 0, because if you're putting 0 pixel, you know, 0, then you don't really need that unit of measurement. Out of my habit, I tend to put the little PX in there, but either way is fine. So I'm using, so basically all elements are going to have 0 margin and 0 padding. So when I save this, let's check this out. Let's see, I'll go to Chrome first and uh, refresh. There we go. I'm going to head back over to Firefox refresh and now Internet Explorer refresh so now I've made this change but now things are even more consistent than they were before in Chrome Firefox and IE these pages are looking identical and that's basically because there's no margin and no padding my list items are pushed up right up next to us now you can't see my bulleted items even though this is still a bulleted list, the bullets are actually off the browser page a little bit, off in space to the left. But that's the value of the reset rule. Now the value also comes with a cost, and the cost of the reset rule is now I have a little bit more work involved because on my page, I went and said, all elements should have no margin and no padding. Well, I want some of the elements to have margin and padding, so now I have to put it back where I want it. 
So for instance, my headline one, I might do a text align center, but you know, and I also want it to have margin, let's say 10 pixels on the top. Actually, I'll just do 10 pixels on all four sides. That's what that means. My paragraph, I want to do a text indent of two M's, and I also want to do some margin. Um, maybe 20 pixels on all four sides. And then also for my unordered list. For my unordered list, I'll just do a, uh, I'll do a margin, 10 pixels top and bottom, 30 pixels left and right. So that's what that means. If I use two units of measurement, top and bottom, left and right. So now that I've made those changes, I can go back to Chrome, refresh, there's how things are looking. Firefox, refresh, i.e. refresh. So now I've put in the margins and paddings, or really just the margins that I wanted, and I'm still getting a much more consistent design. Um, and this consistency, it's really going to be exaggerated more. The more complex layouts that I do, then the more valuable this reset rule is going to be. And it's good to know how things behave so I can start to apply this stuff in, adv you know, in advance. And so there's, uh, that's a reset rule in action. And these are used a lot by uh, some of the, the bigger websites. And I'll just kind of give you a quick little demo here. I've gone to Apple's website a couple times lately, so let's just check theirs out again. Head back over to apple.com. And right-click on a blank area of the page, view page source. And I'm going to open up their, their base CSS file. And this is Apple's CSS file. And they start off right away with their reset rule. Now, notice their reset rule is a lot more complicated. By the way, this is a comment in styles. So slash asterisk and then asterisk slash. That's how you put a comment. And they've neatly organized their CSS file. And this one is much more complicated. So notice instead of using the wildcard selector, they've literally named all of these elements. And what are they doing to all these elements? Let's keep on scrolling, just keep on going. Here we go. They've set margin to zero and padding to zero. Why not just use the asterisk? Well, they wanted to be very specific, okay? So they're just putting margin and padding to zero, but then they're doing some other things with these other elements. Here's headline one and headline two again, and what are they doing with this one? They're setting um, font weight to normal. So basically, anytime somebody uses a heading tag at the Apple website, it is not bold. By default, it's going to be in a normal font weight. And they're also setting the font size, a standard font size for everything. Sometimes you'll just see 100% being used instead of 1M. Actually, 1M is a little bit, I don't usually see that one, but 100% is pretty common. Field set and iframes, borders, I like this one a lot. Later, when you're working with forms, um, I generally set field set borders to zero or none. That works. And so basically, this is just a very specific reset rule to put all elements on an equal playing field. And what's this last row down here for article, aside, footer, header, H group? These are all new HTML5 elements, so I bet it's display block. There it is, display block. This is a pretty common new technique. Um, Basically, we've got all these new elements, and some slightly older browsers don't recognize these new HTML5 elements. So a common tactic right now is to do display block. I haven't been doing that much lately because all my demos have been using uh, late, late version browsers. So there you go. So that's Apple's much more complicated reset rule. Now, if you like this, you think that's pretty cool to use that, go ahead, jump over to Apple's website, and you can grab their uh, reset rule. This is not copyrighted information here. Um, and you can find good examples of reset rules all over the web. If you were to do a Google search for reset rule, especially CSS reset rule, you'll come across Eric Meyer's website. Eric Meyer is a guru of web design, particularly related to CSS. And here we go, CSS tools, reset CSS. So over at his website, there's plenty of articles about the value of reset rules. And here you go. Here's a public domain version. So he's got a very long and complicated reset rule also, which specifies a bunch of different elements, but ultimately sets their margin padding to zero. He also goes a little bit further, setting border to zero. There we go. Font size 100%. Font inherent, which is the standard font size. 
and vertical align baseline. So these are just much more detailed and complicated. Here's the HTML5 display role, just like we saw on the Apple website, article aside, details, fig caption, figure, a lot of these new HTML5 tags set to display block. So this is a much more complicated reset rule. But you could actually set up a CSS file just with this information. Now let's suppose that I did something like that. Let's say I took all of this and I wanted to create a reset rule. And he's got a ton of it on here. So this is all the reset rule, all this stuff. So I could copy that, head over to my editor, create a new file, paste it. And of course, I could clean it up and stuff like that. But let me do a save as. I'll save this to my desktop. This will be my reset.css. I'll spell it right though. So now I've got this reset rule saved. And then when I want to refer to it, no big deal. I just go to my link. There we go. So now I have a reset rule included with my page. <coughs> Excuse me. So I can now, I could actually take this out, save what I've got, head back over to my original page, and I shouldn't really see much of a change. Oh, I did see a little bit of change because I forgot my headline one got reset. So it's a normal font weight and a normal font size. So I'd have to change that back if I really wanted a bold headline. So that's using a much fancier CSS rule, a reset rule. And if, of course, if I had other external CSS files, as I would, then I would simply just put in another link tag. And of course, this would be my, who knows, my main style or something like that. But I would still list them in this order. If I was using two separate CSS files, my reset CSS file would go first, and then my main style would go second. But of course, you could always put the reset rule at the top of your main CSS file. So a little bit of information about the CSS reset rule. I think they're a great tool. Beginner, beginning web developer could probably ignore it. But if you know your web layouts, your designs are going to start to get more complicated, I think you'll want to incorporate it into that. So start including a reset rule in all of your CSS. Have fun.